This might look like a dead plant, and it is, but what's underneath here is certainly not dead. It's very much alive. And these tubers that I'm about to dig for might make you fart like a champion, but they're also very good for you and extremely tasty. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I'm gonna give you my five top tips on how to grow a ton of Jerusalem artichoke in just one small round raised bed such as this. Let's get into it. I'm gonna dig this whole bed up soon and we'll see how many tubers we can get out of it. Native to North America, this fast growing tuber vegetable with the big yellow daisy like flowers is one of the easiest to grow backyard food crops. No one really knows how it got the name Jerusalem, but people speculate that when the plant was first introduced to Europe, the Italians gave it the name Girasol artichoke and they said it with their hands. Girasol meaning sunflower. So over time it became translated in English to Jerusalem. And although I can't find this written anywhere, I think the artichoke part came from the taste because it's very similar to the taste of a regular artichoke. You know, the thistle type artichoke plant, the globe and the heart of that tastes uncannily like the root of the Jerusalem artichoke. And since artichokes did originate in the Mediterranean, probably Italy, this name explanation sounds plausible to me. Tip number one, containment. Jerusalem artichokes or sunchokes, which is another name for it, are prolific growers. I mean, they can grow like crazy. One tiny piece of tuber, so if I break that off, one tiny piece, you can see a few eyes, can grow into a full-sized plant in no time at all. So if left to run wild in the garden, it could easily take over a large area. I recommend containing the crop in a raised bed like this, for example, so it can't get away. And if you do miss some tubers during harvesting, it will come back up generally where you want it without any surprises. There's no problem growing sunchokes in the same bed year after year. You don't have to consider crop rotation as much. But if you do start getting any soil borne pests like things attacking the tubers, excessive tuber rot, it might be time to give it a fresh start somewhere else, but also in a contained area. Tip number two, double crop. Since during harvesting, you're going to miss a few tubers anyway, and they're likely going to come back up next season, it makes sense to keep Jerusalem artichoke in the same bed. However, you don't have to make it exclusive to Jerusalem artichoke. You can double crop, and I think the best way to do this is by growing another surface crop when the sun chokes are dormant through the cooler months. This garden bed first had Jerusalem artichoke overplanted with salad crops and then back to artichoke overplanted with radishes. Now this does work best in warmer climates because you can grow all year round, but you can still use this method in cooler climates too. Say plant the sun chokes really early before spring starts and then overplant a fast growing crop like a salad or a radish and by the time the sun chokes start coming up through the soil, those other plants are fully matured and you're harvesting them or they're starting to already die back in mid spring. Simply pre-bury or position the Jerusalem artichoke tubers early, several inches under the soil. Don't worry about spacing too much. Six to 12 inches apart is good, but crowding them in is also fine. Then plant or sow your other crop over the top. By the time this top crop has matured or finishing, the sun chokes will be pushing through to take over. What's ever left of the top crop can be either left on top of the bed to break down or dug in for extra nutrients for the successive Jerusalem artichoke crop. Tip number three, maintenance. Sun chokes 
don't need a lot of care and will grow okay in poor soil. Having said that, you'll get a better outcome if you do plant in good quality, rich soil with compost and starting with a little pre-added fertilizer such as blood and bone or chicken manure. This is a big plant and it does need energy from the sun. So a good sunny spot central to your vegetable garden is appropriate and it does need a fair amount of nutrients for it to grow really well. I don't tend to fertilize through the growing season, but if it is looking a little weak, then give it a liquid feed high in nitrogen to pick it up again. Speaking of liquid, Jerusalem artichokes do like a lot of water. So I recommend watering them often and not letting them dry out. However, you should ensure it doesn't get waterlogged as it is a tuber plant and they might rot underground if you overwater. Tip number four, harvesting. Let's get digging and see what type of bounty awaits us. Any rotten ones like this, just keep them to the side and you can just throw them back into the garden bed and let them possibly come up next season, even though a bit of rot is set in here. No good for eating, but it probably will still shoot from this eye. And here we go. That's not too bad. You know, I've got to be honest with you, I expected a whole pile more, but sometimes your harvest doesn't go to plan. And this is still quite a lot. This is a big bowl, and we're gonna make do with this, pickle some and eat it, and, it's, and also plant some for next season. Perhaps it's time for me to change beds that could be the way to go into something else. I noticed quite a few rotten tubers this time. So yeah, it might be time to move on into a nice new fresh bed and give it a better chance. But regardless, we've grown a ton of it in the past, so you get the gist of what I mean, even though this isn't overflowing, so to speak. The tubers don't like being exposed to light or too much air, or they go mushy very quickly within a few days, even if you keep them in the crisper or a dark place. You know, still the best way to keep Jerusalem artichoke is in the ground. Just leave them buried and dig them up and use them when needed. If keeping in ground is not practical, then dig them up and store them in a container or bucket with soil or sand and use again as required, keeping enough to plant out next season. Tip number five, eating. Another way to preserve the crispiness of Jerusalem artichoke is to pickle them through fermentation. This is one of my favorite ways to keep and eat them. Due to the high fiber and probiotic goodness of these tubers, some people suffer from gas, hence the fart joke at the start of this video. Fermentation seems to help reduce the effects. Perhaps the microbes offset each other, I don't know, but it could be something to try if you are getting constant gas problems or just blame it on the dog. Seriously, fermenting Jerusalem artichoke is not a joke. It keeps the tubers super crisp until you want to use them and they taste excellent pickled this way. Break the tubers into bite-sized pieces and make sure they are clean. Place them in a fermenting jar and cover with a brine solution of about two tablespoons of salt dissolved into one liter or quart of water. Leave them to ferment and bubble away for about three weeks and keep taste testing until they are fermented or pickled to your liking, then store in the fridge to eat in cooking or raw in salads. I really do rate growing Jerusalem artichokes highly. They are a tasty, healthy, versatile, and easy to grow backyard food crop that also looks beautiful in the garden. Remember these top tips, containment, double crop, maintenance, harvesting, 
and eating. Do all those things right and you'll grow a ton of Jerusalem artichoke in one small round raised garden bed just like I can. Well, most of the time. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big dirty thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. What are you trying to do? Make a fool out of me? Yeah, this isn't too bad, but that's not good enough. I expected a whole lot more. I want more out of you guys next season. Got it? Yes, I got it. Good. There's one more. Oh, and another one. Told you, never get them all.